The land around Arthur Hamish Miller's West Cornwall home at Tren Crom, between Hale and St Ives, is steeped in ancient history and mythology, both subjects close to his heart. His acclaimed book, The Son of the Serpent, first published 20 years ago, was the story of a remarkable journey of discovery across Britain, exploring ancient sites and megalithic monuments beginning here in Cornwall. With co-author Paul Broadhurst, they were a time team long before the television series of the same name. For this edition of In Person, join Mike Dees as he talks with Hamish Miller about his life and passions. Variously as industrialist, blacksmith, dowser, writer, and now in his ninth decade, the driving force behind a global initiative, the Parallel Community. After building a successful bespoke furniture manufacturing business, you, in your words, finally saw sense, left the rat race behind, downsized and moved to Trevisco on Trencrom Hill. So that was about 20 years ago. It was more than 20 years ago, actually. And it was a complete cathartic experience because I'd had a out-of-the-body experience in hospital. It was a very profound experience. It was a delightful experience, in fact. But when I came out of it, I realised that what I was doing in the furniture game was not really what I wanted to do. I decided to move out of Sussex and... I looked around, actually. I looked around in Scotland and Wales and, and even into France and Ireland. But I kept coming back to Cornwall. In fact, I kept coming back to the Trencrom area because I could not resist this hill. It did something to me. It was extremely important to my life. But there was some force behind the move to Trencrom and things were happening and the management was sorting something out. I really didn't know what to do down here. I didn't know how to earn a living, but... Fortunately, it, there was a whole sequence of events came up. The, the workshop down at Lalant became vacant, so I rented that and I started blacksmithing. And that led me to people like Michael Colmer, who decided that um, I should know more about earth energy. I knew nothing about it then. And he pointed me in the right direction. He also pointed me to a man called Colin Bloy, who was a dowser and a healer. Many people think dowsing, Hamish, is, is just about locating hidden sources of water. Um, I remember when I lived in the USA and I needed to sink a new well at my home, the drilling company doused my land to find a suitable spot. But clearly there's more to this ancient practice than uh, finding water. There was a huge amount more. It's, it's always associated with dowsing because that, that was, that was the, the first technique that was uh, kept on in secret by country people. In secret, because the church at that time thought it was the work of the devil. And the technique of, of water dosing was carried on by the pagans, the people of the land, because it was necessary to find water. Dosing is, is one of these things where the definition is so simple. It used to be the use of rods or pendulums to find minerals or water, end of story. But now the definition is the use of apparently paranormal powers to make discoveries. But the limit is your ability to ask the right questions and your ability to concentrate to a degree that's more than necessary in our normal life. The Sun and the Serpent, your book on specific earth energies, was the first book of yours to catch my imagination. That was amazing, really, because um, I became aware of earth energy but I also became aware of the importance of finding out about it because it apparently was affecting people's behaviour. And I, th I thought it was extremely important to find out mo more about it. So I concentrated on one particular line, and it was the Michael line. Now, according to John Michel, who wrote The View Over Atlantis, he opened my eyes to this, and, and he talked about this energy line coming down from Glastonbury to St Michael's Mount. So I thought, if there is a line, perhaps it has some energy on it. Ley lines are a straight alignment of three or four special or sacred sites. Mm -hmm. Energy lines are the Earth's nervous system mm -hmm. or its meridian system. And initially, I found that the energy line, the Michael line, which was supposed to be a straight line, was not straight. I had a great deal of trouble in establishing that what I was dowsing was one particular line. And the only way I found out how to do it was the subsequent discovery that the, all these major lines are made up of literally hundreds of separate little lines, all of different frequencies. Now, that gives them a signature, like the way we recognise human faces. Faces have all got the same bits, mm -hmm. but they're all subtly different in colour and texture and position and all that sort of thing. So you can recognise a particular 
line, and that's what led to working on The Son of the Serpent. More books followed, and then you also worked um, as a result of that with various television programmes. I'm thinking here of The Time Team and Robinson's Way. In 2007, you, in conjunction with a core group, launched the Parallel Community here in Cornwall. A huge number of people attended the inaugural launch. What was the catalyst behind this? The catalyst was an extraordinary experience I went through in, in New Zealand through Dosing Earth Energy. The reason we went to New Zealand, actually, was that we had spent three years on the Son of the Serpent. We'd spent ten years on the Dance of the Dragon, which is the energy line, the Apollo line, mm. down through Europe. And we found that the, where these energy lines were crossing, the Earth energy was making a particular strange mathematical manifestations. Now, I wanted to find out more about it, so we, we went to New Zealand particularly because the energy there moves a great deal faster than it does in the Northern Hemisphere. And the whole thing led to meeting at a place where it's the birthplace of the gods, actually, they call it. It's halfway across the, the South Island, a place called Castle Hill. And it was the university, if you like, of the ancient Waitaha tribe. And they were a gentle people who lived for a thousand years in absolute peace before the Maori arrived. Now, this is not accepted by historians now. It's a very controversial thing. But nevertheless, they were there, and there's, there's archaeological evidence that they were. The strange experience I had, and I don't have many of these sort of experiences, but they came through on a mind-to-mind -mind communication with their utter despair about what's happened to the human race and they weren't complaining, but they were just desperate that something must be done. They were very concerned about the way we choose our leaders. They were concerned about the medical people not using mind, body and spirit in conjunction. They were very aware of the immorality of the, the financial setup. The Waitaha never uh, in a thousand years, had, they had no war, they had no weapons, no concept of war. And they just can't understand why an economy in the world now is based on armaments. And if it's based on armaments, it's based on killing. And if it's based on armaments, there is a necessity for creating wars. And they're so distressed about this. It took two or three hours to get this message over. And when Bar and I came back from, from New Zealand, we were, we were so concerned to get the message out that I even thought of writing another book I wrote one in 1998, fulminating about all these things like 4 by 4s and, and the immorality of the, the media system. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was It's Not Too Late. That was It's Not Too Late. Yeah. And I thought of writing a book called it's, it's Damn Nearly Too Late Now, We Have to Do Something Now. But Barr said, you won't get to any more people. You'll get to the same people again. We've got a little stone circle and we, we have meetings every six weeks and we... Just acknowledge the earth and very, very simple uh, meetings they are. And there were only five there that, that particular night. And it was when Gary Merrill, a local lad, sat back, he was drinking his coffee, it was pouring the rain and very cold. And he said, every human being deserves to live in peace, but we'll never get the peace until we claim the right. And that sent a shiver down my spine. And a few weeks later, somebody, we talked about it to a lot of people. And they said, why don't we form a parallel community that goes in a different direction, not a confrontational one. And it just developed and developed and developed until we launched this thing, in, I think it was October 2007, in Penzance. And a huge number of people turned up. I know that you're getting a lot of emails from around the world, a lot of interest in this. People are setting up groups and meeting. So this is becoming a global initiative to promote peaceful, positive actions for a more caring, sharing world. That's, yeah, you've summed it up beautifully. Hamish Miller, thank you for being my guest. That was Mike Deeds in conversation with Cornish author Hamish Miller. In Person was directed by Julian Rowe and is a hearsay production for Cornwall World Radio. You can find more information about Hamish Miller at www.penwithpress.co.uk and the Parallel Community at www.parallelcommunity.com. Thank you.